My name is Munya Chihuahua, and I know what you're thinking. I look like an absolute weapon. <laughs> well, you're right. I've got a yellow belt in Taekwondo and Jiu Jitsu, and I once got in serious trouble for choke slamming someone in year one. But uh, just to be clear, I, I was also in year one. Anyway, beneath this football hooligan exterior is actually a delicate butterfly. And I know there's one in you too. So, together with Movember, I'm on a mission to get guys to drop the facade and open up about their emotions. But to open up, they're going to need to wind down. So, we're going to be discussing deep issues and tackling their deep tissues in a little something I like to call deep issue massage. Today's guest is Kay Kurd, a popular stand-up comedian who's performed to sold-out crowds at the Hammersmith Apollo and Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Even so, he's still not as popular as his brother, Lemon. Because <laughs> you get it? Like, Lemon Kurd. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Despite being the only professional Kurdish comedian in the UK, he's been on Comedy Central, Channel 4 and ITV2. I mean, this guy's relentless, once doing four shows in one night. I once did five shows in one night, but then again, I did have a lot of Bake Off to catch up on. <laughs> Kay's YouTube special, Curd Your Enthusiasm, is out now. Mr. Curd! Yo! What's right going on? Gang? F5, F5. come on. You're on Insta right now, thirst trap. <laughs> no, 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 Get no, that no. picture up of, of Kay hanging from the bar. You have been my inspiration, Munya. I saw you backflipping off of a boat on holiday, topless. And I saw the comments, I saw, oh my god, fit and funny, he's sexy, girls tagging their mates going, oh my god, could he get any better? So I've started gymming it like crazy That's with you in my mind. So, massage time. You going hoodie on, hoodie off. Hoodie off, man, I want to go deep. Yeah. Get I want to feel it deep. This, look, I even came dressed like I, I, Look, he I, got the abs in. No, he got the no abs in. This no guy is that. shameless. He is shameless. Hey, this is weird. This is nice, isn't it? It's fun. It feels like uh, this is the type of thing that Elon Musk would develop as a motorbike. I feel like Jim Carrey in, the, in, in Ace Ventura when he's coming out of the rhino's bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to be transported into my relaxation paradise? <laughs> Let's go for it. Three, two, one. Mad. Okay, how do you feel? I feel like I'm floating on clouds in a you know, garden <laughs> of flowers. This is the thing, man. I told you, we proper pulled out the stops. We're not even in England anymore. We're old. This is like central Sweden. <laughs> if you're ready, if you're ready to be rubbed, let's introduce our lovely assistants. Wee! You know they're professional when you hear the shoes squeak, do you know what I mean? Like, Feels like I'm in Ikea getting ah. massaged. Central Sweden. Oh! It's okay, obviously this is a COVID compliant massage. Yep. I saw you went viral early in lockdown with like a an office sketch where everyone was everyone was like um, FaceTiming each other. I have worked so many jobs, yeah. My CV at this point is like a short novel. <laughs> I worked in financial services for about six months and then I was like, I'm meant to be a star. I can't work here. Do you know when you look around your office and you're like, right, you look really like this job, innit? Mm. Like, you know, why is everybody so Proper focused? Proper beaming standing at the photocopier like, yeah, it was a good day today, Barbara. If you spend about 10 minutes in the toilet every day, you're basically getting a day off. <laughs> like after the end of the year. Like what, so you spend your days off in places that stink no, of toilets? No, no, no. My point was, my point was, right, sometimes like, oh, I'm just off to the toilet, spend 10 minutes in there answering emails, like playing Snake or whatever on your phone. Yeah, I bet you're playing uh, Snake. You add that all up, you get um, you get a day <laughs> off at the end of the year. It does pay off. 10 minutes a day, guys. No, honestly, man, just, like anybody listening to this, man, just go into, go into the toilet. Just go missing for about 10, 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna ask the masseuses to go a bit more intense now. Mine's going ah, mine's going ham already. <laughs> what about yours? Uh, listen, I, I get these regularly. Like I said, I, I, I've had I've had sports massages from a guy called Elvis before, right? And oh, look, oh, oh. he got me into certain positions <laughs> that I felt really vulnerable in. Yeah, so this is this is this is, this is this is playtime in comparison. So when you was growing up, yeah. where when did you first like sort of? come across the expectations of being a man. My parents came to this country as refugees, so mm. immediately, as the eldest sibling, you've always got some sort of responsibilities. Yeah. And I speak about it like in my stand-up and stuff as well, like when you're about eight years old and you're having to make conversation, like phone calls with like gas and electricity companies with your parents mm. because you're the one that can speak English. So I think like the expectations of not necessarily just being a man, but being a responsible adult, sort of falls on your shoulders quite early on. Mm, for because, sure, man. Because, because 
as an elder sibling, you're not ne- you're, you're you're essentially like parent 2.0, mm. like. But you know what I mean, like you, you're you're sort of trusted with certain things. Do you think as you became the man you are now, yeah, that all of that those expectations and that weight on your shoulder kind of has impacted how you are now as a fella? A hundred percent. I mean, you you're sort of always made to feel like you have to be strong, you know, no crying, mm. no no showing vulnerability. You can't you can't seem to be weak. Um, oh, yeah. and that always does that does build up and and often when you're going through stuff you sort of tend to go through it alone because you're like well i don't really want to bother people especially with like the kind of stuff that we do where you're trying to make people laugh mm. all the time and people are like oh my god you must be so happy <laughs> you're like you're like nah bruv i just cried my eyes out but you didn't see on stage as a comedian yeah how thick-skinned are you really after all your experiences do you have any moments where you're really worth just feeling you know proper down after it and you didn't share it, you bottled it up. Oh bro, 100% I bottled it in. You man, I'd self-medicate with like a kebab or something. <laughs> just to, just, you know I mean? That was the way I deal with things, but it's, it, it's, it's one of those things, man, where you've got to sort of realize you're never as good as they say you are and you're never as bad as they say you are. As entertainers or whatever, we're so self-centered in, when you think like, oh, if I have one bad gig or a bad video, everybody in the world's talking about it like that is the only thing on anybody's mind in actuality like n- nobody really cares that much like, yeah it may have been like a five minutes in their life where they're like oh that wasn't very good and then they moved on that's it man. but it plays on your mind the whole day so i think you, a bit of perspective mm. is needed when you're when you're when you're doing these things you've got to realize that you know that may, maybe it wasn't my best effort but l- let's move on i can't dwell on it at the time when you was bottling things up was there like a change in you? Yeah, I've, I've been through really severe bouts of depression and it, mm. and it started from a very young age as well. Really? At like um, 16, I went for counselling for it and stuff mm. as well. I think it is important to find people that you can speak to, whether it is a mental health professional, whether mm. it's a partner, whether it's just somebody that you know that you can trust uh, to talk to, to things, talk, talk about things mm. with. Once you sort of verbalize it, it sort of makes it easier to try and come to terms with and deal with it. But look, everybody's got their own way of dealing with things. That's it, man. But when you do find the right person yeah. to open up to and stuff, it could even be a mate or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've found that it just feels like this, oh man, it just feels like this weight, this huge weight off your shoulders, the weight 100%. of the world off your back. 100%. You know what I mean? Once you get the right person to talk to, it. It, it changes everything. What lengths do you go to for self-care? Are you a face mask kind of uh, Yeah, I do two face masks a week. Um, I, uh, there's one I get from Kiehl's, which is great. It's a turmeric mask and then a, one from... Turmeric, you know? Yeah, it's wonderful. It's lovely. I want to get a jerk one. Yeah. <laughs> lovely jerky flavour out of all your pores. Try and get some Dunn's all-purpose seasoning um, <laughs> if you really want to go ethnic with it. But um, I also use um, the Himalayan charcoal face mask from Body Shop. Absolutely amazing. Would recommend it. It's actually mad how they always try and say something by putting the name of a country before it. <laughs> yeah. So it's always like... Have yeah, why can't it be charcoal from like Barnsley? Yeah, you know I mean? like, Barnsley yeah. charcoal face mask. Yeah. A lot of guys can be macho, but look man, take care of your skin. Women like men with good skin, man. Fling on a face mask, put some headphones on, listen to some relaxing music, meditate for a bit and see how good you feel, man. Honestly, girls are onto something, man. Trust me. That's a great date idea. Do you want to come around, man, for some face masks and chill? For a Barnsley, a Barnsley face mask. So tell me this. Comedy, right? Yeah. Now, I've very much fallen into it, bro. I had no intention of making anything funny. I just wanted to be a presenter. <laughs> but uh, I get the impression that it can be quite a solo game. Yeah. Do you have uh, like a, a network of comedians that you do kind of chat with when you're having good the goods and the bads? Yeah, I've got like group chats I'm in with certain comedians and stuff, which is great when you're, when, when there's certain things that are career related or even when they're not to sort of talk about, especially during lockdown when a lot of people in the arts were struggling or they mm. had you know they, they were having a hard time it was it was very important to have sort of some people in the same position as you people probably think like group chats with comedians are just like jokes jokes jokes, jokes. usually it's the most depressing chat <laughs> you, you ever see in your life it's like guys i'm having a really hard time today <laughs> guys i've got this bit of hate guys are you seeing this um so it's not as bad it's like when people say oh yeah comedians car share must be mad it's like no it's not bruv it's just people arguing at what over what service station we should stop at <laughs> 
Bro, your head is actually so far down right now. Sorry, you're sorry, doing, sorry. Toes, you're doing downward dog in the uh, chair. Do you know what? Like, I was just so relaxed. I think I was just slipping down. I was almost ready to sleep, man. The way that the masseuse is gripping up your head like the Premier League trophy. Bro. <laughs> Le LeBron James in my head like it's a basketball. I love it. I'm absolutely in love with it. A couple more questions before we bring this uh, uh, this luxury treatment to an end. Uh -huh. When you played at the Hammersmith, you went out there, Kano P's and Q's. Yeah, gun fingers. Gun fingers. All of that. Uh, what was the rider on that night? Nando's. What spice? Um, I go medium, bro. Do you know what? I'm with you because I tell you another time I've cried. Nando's, when you go Extra very... hot. No, why did you do that to yourself, man? No one likes it extra hot. People just do it for an ego thing, right? People just do it because they go, oh, rah, I'm gonna impress everybody. Shut up, man. You don't like that much spice in your, <laughs> in your, on your chicken, man. What, on a random Tuesday, you're in Nando's. Extra hot. How many napkins do you need? Sorry. It was like eating, uh, just scooping out coals from the barbecue. <laughs> And the reason that I was crying is because I knew that not only was it going in, it had to come back out at one point as well. Yeah, oh mate. Do you have like a pre-pep talk that you do to yourself? I watch these um, sort of uh, YouTube videos to, to learn how to make yourself more confident and stuff. And I used to stand in like this power pose. Like, you know when Cristiano Ronaldo takes oh, a free Oh, I love kick? that. Yeah, I'd stand like that and then I'd repeat to myself, I'm funnier than Eddie Murphy about a thousand times before <laughs> I went on stage, right? But I'd be like, I'm funnier than Eddie Murphy, which was, a lie, right? <laughs> Especially at that point in my career. It was it was, it was a horrendous lie. What do you do? do you, is there anything you do before you psych yourself up, before you do a public? So I do yeah. affirmations in the morning, just to like proper, you know, gas myself up. And what kind it. of stuff do you say? I'll be saying stuff like, um, you know, today is gonna be the best day ever. I say that every day. Do you know what I mean? Because wow. it could be. The whole reason I started getting into that is because a few years ago, when I was trying to be a presenter and stuff, I was finding it so hard to get my, bro, I couldn't even get an eyelash in the door, never mind my foot. <laughs> and I was just getting so frustrated and I was like, I'm turning into the guy who just whinges every time you see him. And I thought, I don't want to be that guy. And so yeah. I, I started to say, what do I have to do for my own headspace? Bitterness is, is really, it's really destructive. So to get out of that, I, I commend you for that because yeah, a lot of man. people stay in that phase and then they start, they don't look within and they start going, oh yeah, it's everybody else's fault. But the other day, even the other day, I had to reach out to one of my, my best bros and say, look, I'm actually struggling right now because the workload is just so mad. And uh, the expectation of that, because you've you know, you've got to deliver the work first of all. Yeah. And then you've got to be, you know, people think you can replicate what they see on your page after hours of thought and planning. Yeah. For them, just hand it over to them on a plate. And so I just had to say, you know what? I actually feel a bit overwhelmed. Okay, you've got your sort of macho character on lock, you know, the voice that you do sometimes. Yo, you're right, yeah. Yeah, that one. For How the members doing? of the, for, for everyone watching members that. Members of the macho community. Yeah, <laughs> no, for everyone watching that video going, hey, that's me, big man. Uh, what would you say to those guys? Look, man, it don't make you less of a less of a strong man, less of a hard man or whatever if you open up. People always have people to help them around. That's why big CEOs have assistants. You don't have to go through anything alone, mm. right? So like a problem shared is a problem was it halved or something? Amen. Yeah, there you go. Some so, sort of fraction. Even during the height of lockdown, I put out a post saying I'm going through it, right? Mm -hmm. And I, it helps for a few reasons. One, it's just cathartic. It means like you can get a weight off your chest. Just telling someone, look, man, I'm not feeling well. People are a lot more forgiving of physical health. So like if your belly hurts, you're like, oh, I've got a belly ache. People mm. are like, oh my God, no, why? And I think we need to get to that level with mental health as well, where you're like, Do you know what, I just don't feel happy today or I feel down today. Mm. If, you, if you aren't feeling good, just tell someone it feels it feels a lot better just that you've got it out there. It's like, oh, somebody's acknowledged my problem. It's like anything, man. Once you start verbalizing it, it's easier to treat it. I feel like if that was the case, because you know, you go to some countries and that is the case and always they're happier. Yeah. And what I noticed is when I came to England, when people go, are oh, you right? They ain't saying, are oh, you all right? No, they, saying, nobody cares. When you say you're right, you just reply with you're right. Exactly. No so one's care. It's time to make your right mean, are you all right again? Yeah. That's my campaign slogan. Yeah, make all right great again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you've dropped some gems today, but I am disappointed by how little pain you've been in. Yeah. So may I ask our lovely assistants to give us the infamous karate chop treatment and see whether we can get out a little, that's not even hard for me. Okay, that's a little bit more. 
Okay, come on. Can you like do something to his spine or something? Like there even, is nothing, bro. Have you not got some you sort? Know of, I've been through, bro. Have some sort of hammer. I've been through bro, it. This life. is light work, bro. <laughs> when I was on the streets, I was getting karate chopped, bro, from young. And three, two, one, relax. Oh, how do you feel? Bro, I feel great. I feel like a new man. I feel like a sirloin steak, to be honest. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to get served up an STK. <laughs> bro, it was it, it was great having you, man. And um, thanks, bro. I feel like what you said is so true. People think that comedians and funny people, they, they you know, they ain't deep like that. But you know, we go through it. Yeah, yeah. You know I, I, mean? I, I think I think people always that pressure as well. I've always been the happy guy, the one that's cheering other people up. But who cheers up the guy that cheers other people up, bro? <laughs> I can't take you seriously when you're riding that chair. Like, I know this is mad. Yeah. It's a mad vulnerable position, but you know what? Like throwing your back into uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Ice cubes playing in my head. <laughs> you could do it. Yeah, I got Taylor Swift play right now. <laughs> anyway, bro, virtual high five. Bang, we did it. Thank you very much. Your bro. first deep issue massage. Yeah, I'll, I'll be back. Mm. Just invite myself back to a recurring <laughs> format. Right, that is it for episode one. Big thank you to Movember for making this happen and also for encouraging guys to open up and look after their mental health. If you need any help, there are links in the description. Next time, I'm joined by my actual twin, except the one who, who got the full head of hair. Wes Nelson will be in the building, but until then, I've been Munya Chihuahua and this is Deep Issue.